In terms of, say, your character of uh, Detective William Murdoch, yes. <laughs> yes. wondering if uh, Murdoch had any kind of psychological significance to you. That I'm working out my homicidal feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> That's a good safe place to do it. <laughs> Ernest Jones wrote an article about why people like reading murder mysteries. And you never wanted to read one ever again after that <laughs> because it was all about the sublimation of the homicidal drive. And blah, blah, blah. So I just kind of like them, Ernie. <laughs> it's fun. It's this character. Yeah. Well, the whole creation of, of characters is, is, is an interesting development, too. And, and especially as it goes on because it, it sounds strange to say, but they do seem separate from you after a while. And, um, you know, just doing things and saying things that take me by surprise sometimes. You know? <laughs> and that's fun, eh? It's, it's fun. like that they kind of take yeah. on a life of their own. Totally, yeah. And kind of following their lead. Yeah, I, it's really, you know, because it sounds strange, but I'll sort of admit I, I like Murdoch, actually. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder if kind of a nice guy. A bit of a crush on Murdoch. <laughs> Well, somebody asked me, Did, do you like your Christine Morris character? And I thought, yeah. And I thought, why? You know, is she very <laughs> unlikable? I don't know. But I haven't been with her long enough, uh, as long as Murdoch. So, yeah, I like her. And I like my new character, Tom Tyler. Yeah. So, obviously, it's a bit like you're saying, you put in a lot of things, you know, into your creativity. But then it is like a, a different energy forms. That, it's a different energy. Right? Yeah. That it's not just you then, in a way. It's like, for me, uh, part of my visual art, well, and also like with clown, it's like a giving over in a way. Like, yeah. you know, following those impulses, where do those impulses lead? And you have to kind of... Uh, have enough of yourself and enough strength to kind of give over to the process. Yes, yes, and well, as you can imagine, especially if you're writing murder mysteries and crime novels, you have to be like, wow, where does that come from? It's quite all right, it's very controlled. And <laughs> but it's not really about that anyway. I mean, that's a vehicle that I find very useful, but I must say my real interest is in seeing lives, you know, this, uh, I don't think I ever got over wanting to have a doll's house or something and say, oh, look what they're having for dinner. Oh, isn't that good? Um, and, and you make it yourself, you know, making up a world and hoping that people will believe this world, will come into it, because that's how I felt as a child. I know I did. I felt like before I could read, I can remember not being able to read and so frustrated because it was like a door. And I knew that one step through that door and I'd be into this magic world. And now you're creating yes. those magic <laughs> worlds for other come people. In. Come yeah. in and make me a bestseller. Come on, it's nice. <laughs> That's right. Speaking of which, Season of Darkness <laughs> is your latest book, although the second book is coming out soon, this year. Soon. Yeah, Beware This Boy. Yeah. Same time period. So Season of Darkness is the first book in the trilogy. Yes. That's based uh, in around 1940. Like 1940, World right after Dunkirk. Right after Dunkirk. So World War II. World War II. Yeah, so yeah. One, I, like, I'm imagining that that was you know, from your own history that, uh, and yeah. also you'd said something uh, on your website about how you always felt vaguely responsible for the Second World War because your mom always said how you were born just after the war. Just, just before. Just before the war. You were born just before a war broke out. <laughs> <laughs> Being a rather sensitive child, I also, oh, is that my fault? I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering if a season of darkness kind of... No, because I that for sure I 
I really always wanted to write a book about the war, and and it worked out that way that I'd written seven Murdochs and two Christines. The Murdoch mysteries was flourishing on TV, and I thought, this is the time. And I wanted to write about it. I feel, I feel changed by writing these three books. I feel like because I've been doing so much reading and exploring, it's changed me, and I'm glad about that. It's changed me, and it's put me back in touch with something that I knew was always there, but it's put me back there. So I'm really grateful that I've been able to do that. So when you say it's changed you, can you articulate totally that a little bit more? Well, it's one of those things that I thought I knew a lot about it, mm -hmm. about the world. You know, it's England, and we grew up in the But I didn't, I knew of hardly anything. So I plunged myself into researching deeply, 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 and over and over and over, inspired by the things that I was reading, just inspired. The women, like we've gone from here to this fabulous show that Bomb Girls. The Bomb Girls, Maureen's Bomb Girls, which has right. been picked up for a second season, 12 more episodes. Well, that's another example of what we're talking about, actually, Carrie, because I was literally in the darkened set of Murdoch where and this, a woman I oh, didn't know her very well, her name's Deb Drennan. She's a brilliant makeup artist, and she said to me, what are you working on now? You know, And I said, I'm working on book two, which is set in a munitions factory. And it was as if, if you were drawing it ever, it would go, <laughs> dung, do -do -dung, do -do -dung. <laughs> and she said, oh, I've had this project for years about the munitions factory in Scarborough because my grandmother used to work there. And, and I think both of us said, let's get together. <laughs> Just oh. like an innocent question. If she hadn't have said that, I wouldn't have known, she wouldn't have known. It would never have happened. Just, it was just like that. Tiny. You know, what are you working on? I tease her a lot about that. I gave her a copy of the book, and I made a point of going to the set, because it, it's always dark there. I said, here's your book. Oh. What are you working on now? And I feel like... Um, if your antenna or if whatever it is, the, the you that's the authentic you is out there, you'll respond to those things because you do, you know. So yes. yeah. it wasn't only that day. Another, I would have responded at any day. But in that moment, it was just because it just ha it was a miracle. Yeah. Two years ago only. And now... Wow. We have a billboard up on Church and Bloor saying "Bomb Girls" and just got renewed and just and that it's moment. It's been really well received. Just that moment. What are you working on now? <laughs> and also, like, what really moved me was you were telling me about how, for the last episode of the first season, which was aired just last Wednesday, the town of Ajax. <gasps> had a public screening yes. and it was sold out yes. and even they had to close the waiting list yes. because, and just to me, like, you know, that, like how people want to know more of their history, you know, that there We're was that. Hungry for it. Yeah. We're hungry to connect with, with those things. And it was a fabulous evening. And what happened again, this, there were three women, all of them in their late eighties and and then there was one actress, and they came out, and everybody jumped to their they feet. They were so admirable. They're human beings, and we all have flaws, but they were so admirable. And I think it's like therapy. You can't get anywhere unless you know your own past. I was just thinking You can't. You, that. You've got yeah. to know your own history, yeah. and you've got to understand the things that shaped you yes. and the people with their flaws and strengths, yes. what was happening that created you, really. And so that's what's in a smaller way. We both, both Deb and I were like, this is a story that's got to be told. Mm -hmm. These women risking their lives every day, because it was very dangerous, to build bombs or ornaments or whatever it was to send over to England. Because horrible things did happen. But no, it's like, it's very, very, very important. As you know, like we couldn't do therapy, a personal therapy, without ever mentioning the past. You couldn't. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't possibly. Yeah, you have to understand so by that. 
I, this is where I came from. Well, and then I'm thinking about, again, your Murdoch mysteries, because they're set in Victorian Toronto. So again, it's developing an appreciation of our history. And I mean, I was born in Montreal, so I didn't know a lot about Toronto, so I don't have my grandparents' stories of Toronto. Mm -hmm. So to be able to have your stories, to be able to kind of fill out the history of this city, because I, I mm -hmm. didn't have that. And that, you know, so then when you're walking the streets, there's a different sensibility. A yes. different appreciation. Yes, uh, I know. Uh, people often say that to me from the books and from TV, like, oh, it was so nice to see Bloor Street <laughs> mentioned, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. just say, hey, that's my place. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I feel it's so important. And I know that the whole therapeutic thing, being a therapist, going through therapy, mm -hmm. has influenced that sense of importance. Like, we've got to understand this. We've got to understand what these women, for instance, were putting up with, what they were doing, mm -hmm. and why, of course, the big thing that is getting many women excited in that case is that for the first time for many women, they were getting a paycheck yes. for the first time. Yes. They were with other women for the first time. They were doing jobs that men had only ever done, and mm -hmm. woo, you know. Had a different sense of themselves. S something starts to break open then, so. <laughs> Huh. And, and that that changes people. And I have this one line at the end of your book, Map of Your Mind, that you talk about creativity, that I would just like to read the end paragraph of. Okay. <laughs> so this is Maureen talking about the journey into creative expression. Finally, and perhaps most important, is that you have learned to listen to your own unique voice. I always think it's like developing an ear for music. No matter what you are doing, you will have a standard by which to measure yourself. You will know the exquisite, perfect pitch of truth. <laughs> I didn't really write that. I was just, just channeling it. <laughs> no, I, I believe that. Yeah. You did write that. Yeah. It has the right pitch. Yes. The truth has the right pitch. ¶¶